Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Fiddle. Today, we are going to be making the last piece for the pink room, which is a wash basin. I did make the school desk and record it, however, I tried with my new camera and my new camera didn't work, so I lost footage for building two of them. However, you can find the pattern for the school desk along with the pattern for the wash basin in the link in the description. It will also have the list of materials and supplies so you can make this for yourself. Sorry about all the white paper on the printable. I try to usually add a picture in that you can color later, but I just did not have time to do that for this video. Hopefully on the next one. I went through quite a bit of trial and error when making the pottery for this piece. Originally, I wanted to use cold porcelain clay, which I did manage to get to work. The first two pitchers and bowls there are from cold porcelain clay. However, because I'm using half a mold, it was a little hard to make sure that both halves came out the right size to fit together. So I decided to change directions and go with DOS clay. Now, I still don't know too much about this clay, and most of the videos I've seen online really doesn't talk about the clay and what things you can do with it, but I have learned a little bit since I started. The first time I used it was in my Halloween project, where I made a skin armchair. <laughs> we'll talk about some of the things that I have learned with this clay. These would be the tools that I use the most during this process. All of those circles up top are pretty much cookie cutter shapes for me. <laughs> Random circles. As long as it's got an edge, it'll cut. <laughs> they are also the circles that I use to make the pattern for the basin, which really helps out. So if you want to go ahead and cut out your pieces from your pattern and use those and a knife to cut out your clay, you can do that too. If not, random circles is the way to go. <laughs> There are a few things that I didn't mention in the scavenger hunt, and one of them is that we have to make our own tool. Now, we really just need some clear flimsy plastic and some tape. You want this to be smaller than what your pitcher is going to be because the clay does have quite a bit of a thickness to it. Okay, now we're ready to get started. We're going to start with rolling out our clay. I use really skinny bamboo skewers on either side of my clay, so that way it comes out the same thickness all the way through. Your piece of clay will need to be big enough to wrap all the way around your cone. Trim your edges straight before applying the clay. That'll save you some time later. Make sure your tape is secure before you go wrapping it. I didn't have mine taped down very well and it split open, so I had to start over again. When you go to add your clay to the cone, make sure your clay is sticking up over the end of the cone. We'll be turning that part into the pitcher pour spout. When you've come around to the other side, pinch your clay together to close up the seam. Except for the clay sticking up over the end, we kind of want to curve out for that part. I went back to using my piece of plastic because it's easier to bend to get the shape that I want. This clay reminds me of pottery clay in a lot of ways, except for that it smells like paint and feels like wet drywall mud and just as messy. So be prepared for that. When you've got the overall shape and cut off the excess, you can smooth your seam. For the most part, you can just use your finger and a little bit of water. If you have areas that you need to fill in or you're worried that it's not smooth enough, you can use this clay and add a little bit of water to it and mix it up to make a slurry and fill in spaces with that too. I did notice that after a while of working with the same bit of clay, it begins to start to want to clump up instead of holding together. When that would start to happen, I would add a little bit of white glue, work it into the clay, and then start over. To open the mouth up a little bit more, just use your fingers and pinch the clay, and that'll flatten it out a bit and make it thinner, but it will also give you the excess that you need to come around for the spout. And give it a bit more of the traditional pitcher shape. To cover the inside seam, I used a little bit of the clay and water and rolled out a snake and put it over top of the seam and then used my silicone spatula to smooth out the edges. If there are any spots that you don't like after it's dry, you can come back and sand it pretty easily, but wear protection when you do. Another one of the cool things about this clay is that you can come back after it's dry and add to it and you wouldn't be able to tell that you added anything. 
We'll actually be doing that a little bit later. This project will take you a few days to complete just because of drying time for the clay. When you have the shape right, use a string or a thin piece of wire to cut a straight line all the way around. Cut it a little bit shorter than what you want the picture to be because we're going to add a rounded bottom to it. This picture looks a bit different because this is number two out of three, so that's why mine don't have the mouth on it. I made it a bit differently. Smooth your cut lines out and set it aside to dry. Give it a good 24 hours to make sure it's dry all the way through. While we're waiting, we can move on to making the bottom piece of the picture. Roll out your clay as we did before and use this center circle as the guide to cut a circle, to cut the circle. Yep, words are hard. Anyway, use that to make a circle and you'll need a rounded thing. I'm using my rolling pin, but you could use a, ooh, a bubble gum machine bubble. You know the clear plastic bubble machine bubble thingies? Oh, fiddlesticks. I think I might have a picture somewhere. Hold on. These thingies. They come in handy for all types of things, so if you ever run across these machines, grab them up. You could even use the lid, honestly. Just be sure it's big enough to cover the bottom portion of our cone. Set it aside and we're going to move on to our next random piece of plastic. <laughs> this is from a hair dye kit. I'm not quite for sure which one. If you know what kit that's from, let me know in the comments. We're going to be using it as a mold to make the bowl that goes at the bottom of the basin set. But before we start making it, we have to draw a line on the inside to mark how deep we want our bowl to be. I made two lines on mine because I made my first pictures with that as well. Start by rolling out your clay and trimming the edges as we have before, then gently lay it over top of your mold. You may start to see cracks in the top. If they're deep cracks, add glue and start again. If they're just little cracks, you can use water to smooth them down and then later on we're going to be sanding anyways so you won't be able to tell. As you start to get to the edge, careful on your pushing down. You want to make sure that your clay is meeting up against it more flat than it is at an angle. So you'll have to try to moosh the excess clay up into the corner rather than coming from the bubble part downwards into the corner. Did that make sense? If not, let me know and I can try to explain it a little bit differently. When you've got it set, trim off your excess. You want to cut down straight, not towards the corner because we need that little bit of extra clay right there to help us when we go to merge our two halves together. Trim away to your guideline and then set it aside to dry. We'll be doing that again later. Next, we're going to be making the bowl portion. We will need the center circle from the basin ring. To get this bowl shape, I'm using another bubblegum machine container, only this one's a bit larger. Um, something comparable would be maybe a Christmas ornament or a light bulb. Look around your house, I'm sure you'll find something. Our other pieces should be dry now, so we can go ahead and attach our two halves together. Mix up a little bit of slurry with clay, water, and a bit of glue. Add it along the edge of both halves. Then put your two halves together and build up the area around the seam. If you're not completely even or straight, that's okay. We can fix it later with sanding. But for now, just make sure that our pieces are together and the seam is pretty well covered. While that's drying, go back and make the second half of our bowl. I won't spend too much time here because I've already explained how to do it, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next piece. The basin bowl should be dry enough now that we can make the ring that goes around the edge to hold it in place. For this, you will need the stand bottom round circle. Don't lift it from your surface, then come back with the basin ring center, cut it out, and instead of letting it dry, we're going to go ahead and attach it while it's wet. 
Grab your bowl bottom and add slurry around the edges. I was so glad to find out that not only can you add two dry pieces together, but you can also add wet pieces to dry pieces, so that makes it really nice. Lay the ring over the bowl and smooth out your edges. You may have to cut your ring to get it to fit right, but that's okay. You can smooth it out with slurry and sand it later. When it looks good enough to you, set it aside to dry. Don't forget to give it a full 24 hours. In the meantime, our two halves should be dry so we can put them together. If there are any large gaps or your seams don't match up, do a bit of sanding. I used a big nail file and it worked great. The stuff sands so easy, but please wear protection. Slurry your edges and put your two halves together. Smooth over the edges and let it dry. Next, we're going to add the bottom ring. Uh, the stabilization ring, I guess is what you could call it, for the pitcher, because remember we've got a rounded bottom. Now we need to make sure that it can stand up on its own. Roll out a thin strip of clay around about a quarter of an inch. Add slip to the bottom of your pitcher. Standing your clay on its end, make a circle around the bottom. How big or wide you make your circle is completely up to you, but do test it out to make sure that your pitcher sits straight. I think one of mine leans just a little bit. But that's okay, I still like it. Now we are ready to make the pitcher hand. This part is kind of up to your personal preference. If you want to cut out a strip like we did for the base and make a fly handle, you can. Or you can do like I did and roll out a snake of clay and use it. But we need to attach at the top of the pitcher first and then bring it down and around and attach it lower to the side. You can attach it high if you want or you can bring it all the way down. Completely up to you. It's a little bit easier to get it smoothed out if you attach the top part of the handle, smooth it out, and then bring the bottom piece around. You do have to be careful while you're blending it that way because having the end of the handle hanging over your hand, sometimes it's prone to break. If it does, pull it off and add a bit of glue and start again. Set it aside to dry and we're going to turn our attention to our last piece. We need to make a rim around the lip of our bottom bowl. You can do this two different ways, by cutting the ring where we use the circles or by cutting a strip as I have here. Slip and blend your pieces together. I waited 24 hours before attaching the bottom ring, but if you want to move on from attaching the top ring, you can. It just makes it a little bit easier if you do let it dry in between. Once you have it set right, slip and blend, and we're going to move on to making the lid. You will have to wait 24 hours before doing this part, so that way you're not bending and messing up your clay that you've already done. Using a bit of plastic and a rubber band, wrap it around the top rim of your jar. You want to make sure it has a little bit of an indent into the center. It'll give a better notch for the lid to sit down into. Speaking of lid, that's the one we're going to make next. Cut the smallest circle, I think this is the last time we'll have to do it, <laughs> but cut a smaller circle and then using your jar, turn it upside down to get the indent. We don't want to cut it all the way through, we just want to make sure that it shows up. If you don't get it centered, that's okay. Come back through with your circle and cut the ring again. Once you have it cut, set it on top of your jar to make sure the shape is set. I indented mine way too far right here, so I have to come back and add a bit to the top. And I wanted to have it more of a dome shape instead of being flat across the top, so I gave it quite a bit of a bump. Really, I just took a ball of clay and smashed it in there and then blended the edges. It works fine, you can't tell, and I think that really is one of the great things about this clay. While the clay was still wet, I took a tiny bead and put it on the end of just a bit of a skewer to make a handle for the lid. And that finishes off the pottery set. If you want to paint it, you can. 
although I'm not quite sure on the best way to go about that. Originally for the chair I used markers, but I think something like this would best be suited for paint. But I'm really not sure because I left mine white. Okay, we're ready to start the wash basin itself. We need to draw out and trace our patterns onto wood and cut it out. The two bigger pieces need to be of a thicker wood because this is what's going to keep the balance of the piece together. If we were to use a thinner wood, it might fall over. The thicker wood was quarter inch. I had to go back and check just to make sure. The mirror ring I made out of cardboard and the solid circle was a thinner piece of wood. For the rings, the best way to do that is to cut them in half, then carve out the center. If you have a Dremel, it would make it pretty easy. When you have your pieces all cut out, drill the corresponding holes. These are for the legs to go through and for the mirror supports. The holes have to be big enough for our skewers to fit through. Keep your drill handy, we're going to need it here in just a few minutes. Next, cut five three inch long skewers, then glue a big round wood bead to the end of three of those sticks. These will be our fancy, not so fancy feet. Once they're dry, stick them through the bottom of our basin piece and then add beads all the way up. You'll want them to come right to the end of our sticks. Set it aside for now, we'll come back to it later. Now we're going to turn our attention to the mirror. I still have some of the mirror plastic stuff that I used for the vanity, so I'm using that. I traced the shape that I used for the mirror itself, then trimmed it down just a smidge more. Then I glued all the pieces together, like a sandwich with the backing, the mirror, and then the ring around the front. I glued mine off-centered and had to figure out a way to cover it up. Later on you'll see what I used. Next you'll need the top ring and a ruler. Lay it across the center of your ring and then mark on the sides all four corners. This will be for the towel rack on either side. When you have the holes marked out, go ahead and drill just a little bit. You don't want to go all the way through the other side, but you want to make sure when you go to stick your skewer in there that it's secure. Then cut four quarter inch long pieces of skewer and glue them in the holes. Let it dry completely before moving on to the next step. You'll need two 3 inch long pieces of wire. Here I'm using a really thick aluminum wire. I actually changed my mind and used, of all things, paper clips. I would choose non-coated over coated. It worked, but there is always the possibility of it getting brittle and that coating coming off. Using a pair of pliers, make a loop at one end of the wire, big enough to fit tightly over a skewer. Put it over one of the pegs and then measure about a quarter of an inch past your other peg and cut the excess off. Make a loop at the other end just like before. It may take you a little bit of fiddling to get it to where they fit on the pegs. After you get them on, put a small round bead on the end of the peg to hold them in place. Set it aside and we need to grab four oval beads, two big ones and two little ones. Mark out the center point on all four and drill a hole only through one side of the beads. Next, cut four dowels a quarter inch long. Going through the drill hole, add a little bead and a big bead to two of the quarter inch dowels. Then glue the last two little sticks in the end of the little beads. Set it aside to dry for a few minutes and we're going to start working on the mirror supports. I added a tiny round wood bead and then two oval ones before adding the candlestick holders. I added an upside down bead cap to sit as a cup for the candle. Okay, one more time. We're going to need to drill holes through two large oval beads. This is going to be slots we're going to put the skewer through for the mirror. Add these beads to your post, then measure the distance with a dowel in between the two holes. Trim it and test fit to make sure it's right. We won't be gluing this piece in. It'll be free floating so we can adjust the mirror. Speaking of the mirror, that's what we're going to be working on next. Take a large oval bead and cut it in half. We're going to use these as brackets to hold the mirror on. Take your mirror and turn it over. Lay the stick that we measured and cut across the back. 
Then glue the two beads down, one on either side. Add a bead or two in between your candles and your mirror beads. And this is what it looks like so far. I have to fix that mirror, which I'll be doing next, and then it's off to painting. There for a minute I had no idea what to use to try to make the mirror look better, but I looked through my metals bin and found this metal piece. I'm not even sure what it is or how I got it even, but it works great. It gives a little bit of a steampunk effect. I'm going to come through later and paint it with a rose gold. Speaking of painting, I chose white and pink to go along with the rest of the furniture in the room. One last thing to do before we can call this project done, and that is add some candles to the holders. If you are not sure how to make candles, I do have that in another tutorial that I will link in the description. If you've made it this far, thank you for being here. I hope this gave you some ideas for your next project, and if you make one of these for yourself, please share it with me. I would love to see it. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and don't forget to like, share, and comment, and all that fun stuff, because it really helps me out a lot. Our next piece will be a candlelit reading chair. Thank you, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.